I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to return to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to look at list boxes, and namely uh, how to load a list box and how to uh, do things like uh, resort it and uh, different ways of displaying for the user and also to retrieve values from your list boxes in Microsoft Access. So without further ado, let's get to our Microsoft Access list boxes. Okay, so to get started, I'm just going to create a table here in this uh, Access database that we've used for a couple examples. And uh, I'm just going to make an ID column. I'll make a, a candy type. And uh, <clears throat> I'll make a, a candy name and, and then a price. And you can... Uh, create a table in the same way you just go to create and then table design to get to this step here and we're going to use this table as uh, the basis for our list box and uh, our list box is going to show our our list of candies that we have that will be available for delivery say uh, and uh, as a very simple example um, that's what we'll do there so we'll save this, we'll go, uh, we'll call it the candy table. And, uh, and there you go, we've got a simple table that we can use as a lookup for our list box. But before we do that, uh, we need to put in some uh, values in, in here. So we'll create some candy rows in our table so that we can uh, look those up uh, when we go to load our list box. So our first candy will be uh, type chocolate and we'll call it mint chocolate and we'll give it a price of 250 and then uh, we'll add another row for chocolate and then we'll add a bunch more rows which I'll skip so you don't have to watch that and our last row here will be toffee and uh, a light toffee for three, 320 so that kind of gives you an idea a very very simple example um, that we can use uh, data for our example and, uh, and now we can move on to creating our, our form. And what we're going to do is we'll go to the Create ribbon and we'll grab the uh, form design. And that just gives us a blank form to work with, um, which is great. And then we can go to the ribbon and we'll click on the controls. Now, if you have a much bigger screen, the controls will be already in the ribbon in a big row. Uh, but in mine, it's a drop down because I've got a very small one. So you'll select the list box from there. And then the wizard might pop up, uh, but just click cancel on the wizard because you don't need that. Uh, you, can, you can learn how to do this, um, uh, craft these by hand. And if you learn how to do that, um, they will be much better and you'll get much more use out of them uh, <clears throat> uh, because you'll know how to use them in, in a much more flexible way than, than the wizard. So uh, what we'll do first is uh, we resize our list box. So now we've just got a blank list box there. And uh, we can uh, go to our other tab, and we're going to rename it to LBX Candy, just so that we know that that's a list box, and we'll call it Candy. And then we'll go to the Row Source on the Data tab, and we're just going to double-click on our Candy there. And then we can click Close, as that was the table that we just uh, created uh, for our example and so what do we want to see well we want to see candy type candy name and price and then I'll throw the ID on the end and uh, then you can click the X on the top right there and it'll ask you oh, this was uh, off screen there it'll ask you if you want to save and you can say yes and then now you've got a row source for your list box and that's what we, what we want to see so as you can see, it's got a bound column of one still. And if I just open, open it to look at it right now in form view, all it has is the first row, which is not very helpful for us. And so we need to go and do some configuration. And so in order to make some changes, uh, we can go over to, to our property sheet again, make sure that your list box is highlighted on the form when you go to properties. We'll change that bound column to four <clears throat> because that's the column that's going to return a value whenever we look at this list box and we're going to change the column count to four and then we can go ahead and add our own column widths 
um, so that we can have a <clears throat> our own custom um, design on our list box. So we'll add two centimeters, three centimeters, two centimeters, and then zero for the for the uh, fourth column because that's the ID column. We don't really want people to see that. And then we'll choose column heads uh, is equal to yes, and so that'll display the column heads at the top of our list box so it looks nice uh, when people are choosing from it. So I'll, I'll do a control S to save there and I'll call it candy form and I'll open it in, in form view and as you can see that's uh, got a lot more um, <clears throat> a lot more information in there than when we first opened it because now we've got our type, we've got our candy name and our price and, uh, and of course the ID is hidden as the fourth column which we can query if we use our control G and go to the immediate window. Uh, we can put in our question mark and we can ask questions about the program that are that's running uh, by using expressions. And so we'll say forms, uh, candy form, uh, LBX candy, uh, what's the value in there? And it says that the value is one. So we know that one is selected as the value and that's the first row in there. If I change the value, the selected value on my on my list box, and I go back to my command that I put in the immediate window and just uh, hit enter again, you'll see it gives me a three. And so I can query what's happening on the form um, just to test it out and to see if I'm getting what I really wanna see. And as we can see, ID number three is the white chocolate for $5. Uh, which is the row that I selected in the list box here. And so um, by changing the selected value in the box uh, as a user, um, it changes the ID that's selected and we can, we can grab that ID. Now we might also want to increase our column size because we weren't really using the whole width of the list box that we created and we might have longer names and so there you go. Um, now you can see that the candy name column is a bit wider and uh, we might also want to uh, you know move the list box around maybe make it a bit longer and uh, and things like that so now if I look uh, there's no scroller on the right hand side so if you have a small number of items you might want to just increase the the uh, <clears throat> the height of the uh, of the list box and also um, we might want to change uh, the the headers and to do that because uh, you'll notice that the header says candy type with no space in it, it says candy name with no space so that's not really that nice for users to look at um, so what we could do is we could put type colon and then candy type and then name colon and then candy name and then price colon and then candy price and we can leave ID because it's hidden and that'll that'll put aliases into our statement there and, and that'll allow the program to, to look a little bit nicer uh, when you use your list box. So now we've got a list box, it's the right height, and uh, we can select from it, and uh, we can query it and find out the selection, and we've got nice headers on there as well. So now imagine that we wanted to bind our uh, list box to say a table of orders um, so uh, we could create a very simple order table with just a few fields in it and we could say uh, the order ID is an auto number then the candy ID is is a number because uh, that's going to come from our list box and then say we have um, the delivery day uh, or delivery date and deliver to say so we'll make that one a date time and then we'll we'll say deliver to and that'll be somebody's name just as an example and so you can sort of see the list box being used in action um, by doing that so we'll we'll make our primary key as our auto number for the order ID and then we'll call this uh, candy order and then that'll give us uh, a table that we can sort of bind to so we're going to bind the form and then the list box to the to the field that we want and we can do that as follows so first we'll open our form in design view that has our list box on it 
and uh, uh, we'll click in the gray area just outside of the, the uh, form there and, uh, and then that'll take us to the, the uh, properties for the form and we'll set the record source to candy order which is the table we just created and the record set type to Dynaset that'll be the default and then we'll go add existing fields and we can just drag the other two fields onto our uh, form uh, from the add existing fields and then we can sort of maybe move those into a position that looks okay for your application or whatever this is just a simple example um, and uh, uh, then what we can do is you can see that delivery date is already bound <clears throat> if I go to the properties for that it's bound to delivery date and deliver to is bound to the field deliver to so all we have to do in this case is uh, just take our list box and we'll bind that to our control source we'll bind that to the candy ID uh, in the orders table and so so that's gonna give us a form and now uh, whenever we make an entry you'll see at the bottom there's a record selector um, and as soon as we start creating a record you'll see that the record is started and now it's one of one down below and uh, we can choose a date we can choose uh, the we can say deliver this to Jim and uh, that's going to be a record and that that purple fizzers record there is actually going to be stored so we can add another record say there's another delivery of mint chocolate we can deliver that on the fourth and we'll deliver that to Mary and uh, that's you'll see now it's two of two so we can scroll through those we can scroll back and forth because now we have a columnar form and uh, that's sort of how this works so we could do a third one uh, toffee light toffee and then we'll do that on the fifth and we'll we'll deliver that to James and so and there you can see how the list box is bound to the table and that is how you do single select list boxes in Microsoft Access stay tuned for multi select list boxes in an upcoming episode hope you enjoyed today's discussion on uh, working with list boxes in Microsoft Access if you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and uh, click the bell when you see the bell so that you'll be notified of any new content that I put up. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, uh, please put those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to, uh, to answer any questions that you might have. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.